Which Best Picture nominee are you most embarrassed that you haven't seen yet? I'm going to say West Side Story, because even though this isn't anything novel, I've never actually seen West Side Story in any kind of capacity. So I feel like that's just (laughs) generally something I'm ashamed of. What about you, Alex? It's a tie between all of the ones I haven't seen, because I feel like everybody expects me to have seen all the Best Picture nominees by now. But I haven't seen Coda. I haven't seen... West Side Story. I haven't seen Drive My Car. I haven't seen Belfast. I haven't seen Nightmare Alley. I haven't seen Licorice Pizza. And at this point, like when I look in the mirror, I barely recognize myself. Welcome to Flywheel Fridays, keeping up with the federal IT news cycle, one conversation at a time. I'm Alexander Bolova, media producer for GovCIO Media and Research. With me today on the virtual red carpet are my wonderful co-hosts, Melissa Harris and Kate Macri. Melissa and Kate, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us, Alex. Thank you. With the Oscars just around the corner, we thought we would have some fun and celebrate the year in federal IT with some awards of our own. Which brings us to our first on-air production meeting. Melissa and Kate, what are we calling our awards? Well, I had the really awful idea of the Fly Academy Awards, but every time I listen to it, I hate it more. So we could call them the Wheelies, the Flywheels. I thought we were calling these the Fly Academy Awards. I mean, if you guys like it, that's fine. I just know I came up with it. It almost sounds like dad joke quality. So... (laughs) I like that joke, though. I think it's good. All right. I guess we are presenting the first annual Fly Academy Awards. Alex really hates it. You can just tell in his voice. (laughs) (laughs) These awards have been selected by members of the editorial team here at GovCIO Media and Research based on their reporting throughout the year. Kate, will you present the first category? So our first award today is Zero Trust Advocate of the Year, and that goes to Gerald Karin, CIO of HHS OIG. Gerald Karin has been one of the most vocal and prolific advocates of zero trust in government right now. He loves to talk about how he's developing a culture of zero trust at HHS OIG and all of the different components that go into zero trust. And he's really good at explaining it in a very easy to understand kind of layman's way. And I think that is one of the big reasons why we want to honor him with this award this year. He is featured on Cybercast, our in-house cybersecurity podcast, And you can listen to all of HHS OIG's efforts in zero trust um, in that episode. And then he also spoke at our Cyberscape ID event just a couple weeks ago and also elaborated on the importance of culture and identity management when deploying a zero trust architecture. He's also a self-proclaimed zero trust evangelist, which I feel like kind of says it all. The next category is the Customer Experience Accelerator of the Year. This award goes to Barbara Morden, the Deputy Chief Veterans Experience Officer at the Department of Veterans Affairs. Barbara Morden has been a huge advocate for human-centered design, which has been a rising way of providing digital services and generally just working from the government level down to the taxpayer and to beneficiaries like veterans. Using this methodology, she has helped the VA work on new digital services and mobile apps to provide more accessible services to veterans across the country. So round of applause to Barbara Morden for being an accelerator of improved customer experiences. All right, on to our next category, Kate. So the next award goes to Digital Transformer of the Year, Rochelle Henderson, CIO of ICE. 
Rochelle Henderson gets this award because she's been making some really significant strides in improving IT modernization at ICE to help streamline the immigration process, which has needed updating for a very long time. So one of the things that she's been doing is basically overhauling all of ICE's paper-based processes and digitalizing them into easy electronic transfers of data between CBP and USCIS to help facilitate the immigration process more smoothly. And her accomplishments are a pretty big deal for IT modernization in general. She had a huge undertaking when she stepped into this role about a year, year and a half ago. And she's already accomplished a lot working with CBP and USCIS to improve data interoperability. And she still has a lot more work to do, but she's made a great start and she 100% deserves this award just because of the enormous undertaking that is modernizing IT and the accomplishments that she's already made so far. So for example, one of the big things that she did with CBP was digitize or digitalize, I guess, the A file that CBP and ICE transfer back and forth with information that is information relating to immigrants crossing the border. And before that was a paper-based process and it led to lots of inefficiencies and losing track of you know, people existing in the system, basically. And now that that's entirely digital, they are able to move people in and out a lot more quickly and basically just move things along much more smoothly. So congratulations to Rochelle Henderson. Our next category does not go to a person, but to an agency. Many of us know that FATARA, or the Federal IT Acquisition Reform Act, calls for oversight agencies in Congress to provide a general scorecard to federal agencies, um, the major 24 federal agencies, to meet certain standards in IT modernization, security, and other aspects that are important for making sure you have a good IT posture. And this scorecard actually comes out twice a year, but I wanted to honor the agencies who did best in the latest scorecard, which came out late this winter, and that goes to the National Science Foundation and the United States Agency for International Development, or USAID. They were the only two out of all 24 agencies to receive an A on the scorecard. Until recent scorecard findings, most agencies were not meeting standards enough to get an A. So... This award, the FATARA Award, goes to the National Science Foundation and the U.S. Agency for International Development. So congratulations for you two for getting a tie on this wonderful award. Congratulations. Kate, the next award. So our next award is the Cloud Thought Leader of the Year Award. And this goes to Paul Puckett, who is the director of the Enterprise Cloud Management Agency for the U.S. Army. This award goes to Paul Puckett because he also has been making significant strides, especially over the last two years since the COVID-19 pandemic began, to modernize the Army's cloud systems to be more agile, more telework friendly, and to help move the Army towards the future of cloud, basically. So something that he's been doing is making it a priority for the Army to move away from government-first equipment so that workers are no longer expected to sit in an office working on government-designated equipment in order to do their jobs, but improving zero trust security around cloud environments so that people who work for the Enterprise Cloud Management Agency and the Army can work from home or work from wherever. So that's obviously required a lot of work from a cloud computing standpoint, but also from a zero trust standpoint to kind of get the Army 
to where it needs to be or on the right track to being more telework friendly and more agile and not being so restricted to working in a specific location on specific equipment in order to access Army IT and Army Cloud. And Paul Puckett has also really made himself a, I guess, evangelist in the style of Gerald Karin for Zero Trust in that he he talks about this a lot. He engages with other DOD IT le leaders and Army IT leaders on social media and at events. And he's very open to discussing his vision for Army Cloud and how the Army can basically move its IT into the 21st century. So congratulations to Paul Puckett. And that brings us to our last award. Melissa? Wrapping up the program, I would like to present the Lifetime Service Award. This award will go out to a particular leader in federal IT who has done a breadth of work. And I would like to present it to Maria Rope, the Deputy Federal CIO. She has been in government for over 40 years and will be retiring from her position at the end of this month. So it feels like an appropriate moment to honor her with this award. In recent years, she stood up the federal data strategy around 2019 at, and the start of 2020 when she was the CIO at the Small Business Administration. And she's also been an active participant and advocate for the Technology Modernization Fund which allows for agencies to tap for funding for modernization and improved IT beyond the working capital that they have. So between these and her service at each of the agencies that she's worked at, we'd like to award her the Lifetime Service Award. Congratulations, Maria, and best of luck in the next chapter of your life. Before we wrap up today's episode, are there any other individuals that you would like to recognize? So we have a bonus award just to make things a little fun because sometimes we could be serious. And that is the coolest Zoom background of the year. We would like to award this category to Rob Wood, the CISO of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. For those of you who don't know, Rob Wood has created a DevSecOps authorization and verification system dubbed Batcave. And it looks to balance innovation and development with security across the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And he likes to promote this system that he's helped stand up with this great virtual background that is an homage to actual Batman. And he also has, for those of you who may know, and some of his uh, real world background behind him, an actual bat suit. So he's just really weaving in his love for Batman into his work. And we all need to bring our passion into our work because that just makes work a lot more fun. So thank you, Rob, for setting a North Star for how we should all be approaching the work we do. That concludes our first annual Fly Academy Awards. You can find links to articles referencing our recipients on our website, govciomedia.com. But that's all for today's Flywheel Fridays. If you enjoyed this episode, keep the conversation turning by subscribing and leaving a review on the podcast platform of your choice. I'm Alexander Bolova. I'm Melissa Harris. And I'm Kate Macri. Thank you for listening. Flywheel Fridays, along with GovCast, HealthCast, and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released weekly across our shows. You can follow all of them in your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at govcio.com. The Flycademy Awards. I can't say that with a straight face. Doesn't matter. I think we're going with it. All right. <clears throat>